Hello and welcome to part one of Aspens in Chat. Okay, you're looking at the reference and you're saying, my gosh, this is going to be complicated. So the key to this lesson is how to simplify this down to an abstract shape and build up from that foundation. So that's what we did in this portion of part one of a three-part series. And uh, so I guess the subtitle of this is Don't Freak Out. Always start with the simple stuff and build on your simple shapes. And um, if you're going to get into painting every little aspen right now, you're going to lose it. You're going to wait till that's till later. And uh, the less you say about aspens until the very last part of the painting, the better you will be. So uh, get outside and paint. Paint with your friends. Get in front of a blank canvas and keep painting. Thank you so much for joining me. I'll be introducing topics to you almost every week to make you more competent in becoming a landscape painter. So, I've said enough. Let's get to part one of Aspens in Shadow. Thanks for coming by. Hello and good morning again. And get ready for starting part one of a three-part series and I think we've titled this uh, Aspen in Shadow. And definitely we have a lot of Aspen in Shadow. So uh, it's kind of intimidating seeing all these branches and rocks and a little bit of water. And uh, so how do, we, how do we start on such a complicated painting? Well, what I, I do is to try to simplify it down to say, where are the dark shapes? And what I see here is above center is this the uh, darkness of the base of the aspen coming down to the stream and then moving off to the left with some big old rocks over here on the left. So the bottom part's going to be dark and the light, uh, the upper part is going to be warm. So I mean that's the basic stuff we have to keep in mind without freaking out with all these uh, objects, if we start right now painting all this object, it's just going to drive us nuts. So we're going to try to keep this thing simple. Let's talk some more about uh, getting started. This is a 12 by uh, 16 canvas on gator board. Um, it's linen. You don't have to paint on linen. Canvas is perfectly all right. I paint it on, I still paint on canvas. Um, I have my basics blue, red, yellow, my two mixers, Naples yellow, cool gray, and my two subtle guys here, um, raw sienna, burnt sienna, and my exotic green, which would be viridian. I have my titanium white down here, and over on the left I have a cad yellow medium, because I'll probably be using that in the upper part of the painting. So that's the... <coughs> That's the colors I'll be using. Um, that is an ultra blue, that's an alizarin, and that is a cad yellow light. It's the uh, blue, red, yellow. I've got my basic stuff. I'm always using a big flat. Looks like I've got a 10 here. And uh, then I've got uh, some filberts, which is a 6, and a 4 filbert, and a 2 filbert. So those are my tools. Looks like I have a T7 palette knife, razor blade scraper, and some titanium white on the side just in case I go through it so, so much. That's the basics. Got my odorless turp over on the right. Okay, so um, let's figure out a foundation line. <coughs> a foundation line is something we can build up from or down from or from the left or the right. So I'm going to go with a gray, a little bit of blue, blue, gray, and a lot of white. Blue, gray. And I'm going to put the foundation line uh, up here, which is the division between the warm upper part and the cool lower part. It's above center. And that's where I think this should be, or maybe just a little bit higher. So you can always 
There we go. I think I'm a little bit more confident with that. And now what I want to think about is uh, abstract shape. What I see are these darks coming over here, and then somewhere in here is kind of a pond type thing. And here, this area. And a lot of darks over in here. And a lot of darks over in here. And then we see kind of a family of rocks here. They're pretty big. I think I'm going to reduce them a little bit. I'll put one here. I think this has to come down even farther. Just lowered my little pond there. It's actually a little moving stream up in Rocky Mountain, Rocky Mountain National Park where I was this last couple of days painting. So here's rock one and then here's rock two. And I'm going to flatten rock three out a little bit. And I think that then we have some smaller rocks over in here. And I think more rocks up in here. So I have a bunch. I, basically, I have my main three. I have one, two, and three. Then I have an outrigger here. Where this could be four. And maybe some other guys we can get off into here somewhere. Okay, let's change brushes. We've got to get some darks in here. So I know you're <clears throat> really wanting to get in here and um, paint those trees. But I think what we want to do is stop thinking about trees, just thinking about dark. So let's make a blue and a burnt sienna. Blue. Add some red to it, a lizard. I'm going to add some viridian in it. Viridian. That sucker's dark. It is dark. All right, let's get number 10 out. I've got some... I cleaned my brush with Bob Johnson's baby oil last week. And I'm washing that out with some turp. Gonna get a little bit more blue in there, a little bit more green. And I'm gonna start thinking about these darks I want to put in here. And now I'm just putting some suggestion of tree base, tree bases in here. And as they go back, they're smaller and smaller and smaller back in here. And I see a bunch of smaller stuff over in here. Over here, I have a kind of a big old main tree right in here. And I'll carry these darks off this way. I want to put some darks on the base of these rocks. Adding a little bit more dark in some of these guys. I'll put another one down in here somewhere. Okay. I think I've got some more hidden rocks right in here. And I shall make them connected over here. All right, I'm cleaning number 10 because I want to use it next 
in kind of this uh, oof, kind of a gray olive. So I'm going to make a blue and yellow. That's lemon yellow, blue. I'm going to add some raw sienna. Kind of makes a more of an olive color. Add more blue. Raw sienna. And now some gray. Going to add some white off to the side. I'm adding some raw sienna. And we have a nice subtle color here. Raw sienna, a little bit of blue. And let's get old number 10 out here and start applying that. I'm going to load it up. I'm going to thin it down with some turp. And I'm putting this, oh, it's an olive green, I guess is the best way to describe it. This is how to lay a foundation of a painting in. There's many ways to start a painting. Mine's a little bit more common. But there's many ways. So I'm going in with thin paint. That's basically what I'm getting at. I've already got the bottom of this paintbrush in my mouth so I can't talk right. Getting the bottom of this done. I better watch this so it doesn't fall into the, my paint. I'm going to hold it. Sorry for my arm in the way. Try to get that out of the way. All right, I'll stick it back in the groove and secure it. All right, let's get this olive stuff back in here. Just a little bit of turf. I mean very little just to get some flow. some of my rocks I was so carefully putting in there. But they're so disguised we can get them later. I'm going to lighten this up just a little bit with a little bit of Naples. Oh, too much. It's I need to bring this up just a little bit. I think this has to come down a little bit. And I'm doing so with the water. I can already see my balance of like I've got water, I've got rocks, I've got trees, I've got all this convergence going on over here in the center left, left center. All right, let's thin this, pick up this thin stuff and move it. And start with our next step, which is the warms up top. All right, I'm cleaning my brush, getting that, oh, kind of that gray olive, whatever color out of there. More gray than olive. And let's make a warm color. So with that, let's go over to get a cad yellow, get a Naples. Naples, Naples, and let's get some white in here. And 
And I'm going to also add on one side some gray, blue, kind of for the base of those trees in the back. So, again, cleaning my brush, loading up both sides here, and I'm going to kind of got a little bit of my gray blue in here next to it. And now I'm going to go over to the other side and put some more in here. I think up top I have more the green green color sneaking in over here and let's also just drag a little bit of this through this field right here keeping it thin I'm even picking it up because we're going to have a lot of branches coming through there I want to keep it thin And then down here on the bottom, I'm going to just do some cad yellow medium and white. I'll show you exactly what I mean by right here. Right in here. See how bright that is? Now I want to make it thin through here, but I do need some in this area. Not much. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. And then I'll strengthen it over here on the right. I'm going to go back to my not so bright mixture right in here and bring it down to the bright yellow. Again, see how we're simplifying this painting and that's, that's how you get these things started. We're going to work on big shapes, we have a big brush, and that's how we're going to get started. All right, getting another paper towel. And let's think about some sort of a oh, gray, gray blue sky. So let's get some uh, cerulean and some, some viridian and some white. Ceruleum, Viridian, and white. I think I'm going to get a little bit more of this yellow in upper places here. Okay, clean that brush. Get over to the blues now. Again, keep it thin. So I'm adding some trip to my blue. My brush is a little contaminated from before. And it's a little too dark, so I'm adding some more light. There we go. And now in the center, I'm putting it in Thin. Now to make sure it's thin, I'm getting my paper towel. And making sure I really thinned it down there. All right. I'm going to make sure I have a clean paper towel and I'm going to thin it even more. You can see there's just enough left over to soften it. Now with some of my blues, I'm going to bring it right into the trees. Make sure you clean your brush between strokes because you'll contaminate your sky. 
and I'm running the blue over the top of these trees. All right, so getting back, you can see we have a big yin-yang here. So we have a dark and light. And the value of the trees and the value of the sky is pretty close in value. But you can at least tell that the upper part's blue and this is more of the yellow. Using my thumb to kind of even it out. And Oh, it's good. All right, so we've got this blue here. Let's um, get a smaller brush and put it into the pond here. Hope we have that pond in the right, right place. So I'm uh, getting my blue white. This is cerulean and white with a little bit of iridium. And Make sure that's in there thin too. Just dabbing it a little. And let me see if I can put a little peak of a blue in here to show that it's kind of sneaking off to this area over here to the left. All right, that was detailed, but I couldn't pass it up. Let's go back to our dark, which is blue, burnt sienna, raw sienna. Add a little bit of yellow. And I need some shaping around the water. And what I mean by that is there's a good dark right up in here, above the and there's a pretty good dark below it. So now let's work on the rocks. And I'm going to make them kind of a green color. So what can I use here in my palette to come up with the green? Well, I have this blue. Okay, we can throw some yellow in it. But we have to really go back to ultra blue. I'm going to put some raw sienna in there. Ultra blue. Throw in some yellow again. That's a weird color. I'm gonna have to nail it with knock it down with some gray. Let me throw this yellow in it. Lighten it up a little. I think we're about there value-wise. I don't know if that's the best color in the world, but I love the value. So it should be lighter than the surrounding, so let's try it out. I'm going to add a little bit more Viridian to this and some more Naples. A little bit more gray. Sorry to throw so many colors in here, but now it's too dark. I have to lighten it. And that's making a delightful greeny gray, and I think it is lighter in the surrounding area. And I think that's working. And I've got some other rocks off in here somewhere. I'll try to get a few of them in here. See if that works. And let me finish off the top of my rocks distinctly.
Now I'm going to add some dark to that mixture. I just had some of that nasty dark we had just a second ago and I'm going to put some shadow kind of here's my dark dark on the bottom and it's a transition color value between the dark dark bottoms and the top of the rock. I better be looking at my time. Look, we're running short on time. So we better get some trees in here. Because that's important, right? Let's quit messing with all this stuff. Get it all over into one pile. And let's get back to getting some dark bases. So let's go back to blue and burnt sienna viridian. I threw in some raw viridian. So I got blue, burnt sienna. Viridian and a little bit of raw sienna. And let's get the tree bases in. I'm going to go back. I have a nice sharp number 10. See how sharp that is? And I'm going to be putting some dark bases in. Working my darks. And over here, I'm going to put more. And I even think I have some darks over in here, too. Not as dark, just lighter. Now, as I go up to this closer to the foundation line, there's just a solid dark. Now, I'm not doing a strong horizontal stroke. I'm putting in little horizontal strokes that do what need to be done. This guy's we're going to put right up to the front. And we'll bring him up too. I have kind of a dip here when I step back, so I'm going to have to level this out. And I'm going to be softening this dark with a few strokes back in here. All right, let's take a look at it. Now I also have some darks up top and I'm just going to be, since I have some of this, just kind of... Now you people that like control, you want to connect this to a, a tree base, tree base, but I don't think it's necessary at this point. But I just want to get some darks in the right place. And now let's start with our next mixture. So I have some of this uh, base color left over. I'm going to throw that into the edge here. I'm going to throw some titanium white in there. And I need something, if you don't have uh, raw sienna, uh, yellow ochre will do. And it's kind of a gray-green that we're going to put in here. And that's going to bring us to the end here. As soon as we get this, get these big trunks in, cleaning up my number 10, 
with some turp and I'm reloading with my my gray. See I'm using the horizontal strokes. I think we need some angled strokes here. And you can see you don't have to tell the whole story. Just try to think about getting some of these tree branches up in the higher elevation here. Now it's pretty solid with this kind of gray-green here in this background up in this area. And I'm just, as you can see, I'm just covering up some of these with little vertical strokes. And some people see yellow in here in these trees, and we can worry about that tomorrow. But I want to be bringing some of this over to the right side also and over on the left side. Whoa, we have really made some progress on this painting. Whew, let me get back on it. And we can do a little bit more here with branches or trunks. We're working on trunks and I'll have little, see I'm doing a kind of a, oh kind of a, these thin little guys going off in different directions. They're very light. and they're a little bit undefined. And I want to try to bring some of these going more horizontal instead of vertical. These main guys were verticals. I think I need a good main angle fella here. And again, let's just make sure we have this center area pretty well covered with some sort of gray in there. Now, if you can get that far in part one, you have done very, very well. I have a little bit of this dark left. I'm going to strengthen my rock bases and put a really strong one right in here. I'm not doing a very good job. There's a strong dark. And I have a little bit more dark left over. I'll put it here. And the bases of trees can be darkened a little bit to make them a little bit more undefined. Wow. I'm pretty happy with this so far. One more quick thing since the paint's still wet. Let's go put some scrapes up in here. Oh, that didn't work. Didn't have enough darks in there. there. Well, that made some sense, didn't it? Made an undefined rock a little bit more defined. All right, so that brings us to the end of part one. I'm really pleased with this. I know you looked at this and said it's so complicated, but look, this is how we simplified it. 
We started with a, a foundation line and we made darks on the bottom, lights on top, and kept it simple, simple, simple as we went along. I know some of you are saying, oh, come on, that's not simple. But really, if you looked at it, that's what we did. We'll be building on top of this foundation tomorrow and making part two more balanced. All right, so as I clean my palette, I want to say thank you so much for coming by. And let's get ready for part two tomorrow. All right, thanks for coming by. Bye-bye.